I'm WY6Y. Welcome to my attic. Everybody told me don't put an antenna up in the attic. You won't get out anywhere. I did it anyways and it got out pretty good. This is where it all began. When I first got started in amateur radio, I knew nothing about radios, I knew nothing about antennas, I didn't know what frequency to be on, nothing. Of course, I studied and got the tech certification, but I still really didn't understand a whole lot. And one thing I knew I was going to need was an antenna. And so I started asking around and I found this guy, KX0U, who was running a tech net. And uh, I started asking him about antennas every every week we'd get on there. I was just using the little rubber duck antenna that comes with the radio. And he's like, well, one of the first things you should do is learn how to build an antenna. And that's what got me started building my first antenna, the quarter wave ground plane. As you can see, I knew nothing about soldering or constructing an antenna. I found some plans on the internet and I just went with it and it worked and I felt like I had just discovered plutonium. <laughs> I felt like I had just made the flux capacitor. I felt like this guy. I used this very antenna with a $25 Baofeng to get on a repeater here in Oklahoma City that was connected to Echolink. And next thing you know, I was talking on a repeater in Australia. Okay, copy that, Stephen. Thanks for joining us. Uh, our morning time, your evening. And keep that wind to your fire. Now, as impressed with myself as I was there, using Echolink and a 2 meter 70 centimeter homemade antenna, I really wanted to do a different kind of magic trick. Echo Link's interesting. It connects repeaters over the internet, but I wanted something that would connect with nothing else involved. I wanted something that would be truly peer-to-peer. -peer. I wanted something that I could make my own infrastructure and have the potential to talk to somebody anywhere in the world. And I started studying for my general exam and started reading up about what kind of antennas I should get. And one that piqued my interest was the Infed Half Wave, which has become a very popular antenna. Now it's probably a very popular antenna because it's multi-banded, meaning it works over a wide range of frequencies and band plans. I ended up building one that works from 40 meters to 10 meters, and it's 66 feet long. I was warned not to put this in my attic people said it just wouldn't work it would couple with everything but it actually did it, it worked pretty good I um, it's a compromising antenna but when you're first getting your feet wet in amateur radio and you don't want to spend a lot of money doing any of this stuff I still don't I still try and make everything I can myself I can't always do that but for a large part you can and that's why I ended up with the Infed Halfwave Antenna. I got the kit ARRL and found it pretty easy to build. Uh, I don't think I built it perfectly the first time, but it worked. And I put it in the attic and it worked. I didn't even have an antenna tuner at the time. And I could tell, you know, I was at the far range of what I could push this antenna to do in an attic without an, ante an antenna tuner. But it worked, and I did talk to people in different continents. I think I got down to South America with that antenna on single sideband, and it really shined on digital modes. I could get just about anywhere in the world. So that's my attic antenna. This is the first HF antenna I built. This is the ARRL's 49 to 1 un un for a infed half wave. It's 66 feet long, which, as it turns out, is just about the length of my house. The wire goes all the way. Now, an attic antenna is not going to be perfect. In fact, it's going to be pretty much a big compromise. Every single conductor up here 
from your Christmas lights to your house wiring, everything is going to be coupling to your antenna and trying to become a part of it. So you gotta limit your power that you're gonna use and know what to expect. Definitely use some ferrite chokes on your feed lines and you just gotta kind of prepare for anything, but it will work. And this is a collapsible J-pole. I got this thing from Signal Stuff. It works on two meters and 70 centimeters. I've had it up here for years and it seems to be doing a great job. If you don't mind doing a little attic spelunking, you can run all the coax you need yourself. I've been through just about every inch of this attic and it's a pretty big one. There's a lot of nooks and crannies that are hard to get to. I found it was really easy to run some coax into my study here um, by just simply taping it to the old uh, landline phone cord that was running up through the walls and into the attic. I just taped it to that and pulled it through, and put on a new connector, and it gave me a nice new secondary operating position. I pretty much only use this for uh, for my two meter 70 centimeter for talking on repeaters if I want to, but it's a comfortable place to be able to do it. And I use that with, uh, with my HTs. I only use it with my HTs, but that wasn't too hard to do. That goes into that attic J-pole. I have learned how to navigate up here by taking very small steps. At this point, I've made tons of different kinds of antennas from everything you can think of. One time when I was visiting my mother-in-law down in the bayou in Louisiana, I made one from a popsicle stick, an SO239, some landscape wire, and a piece of bamboo I cut out of the swamp. And it worked great on 40 meters. It was a dipole. So one thing, good thing that you're going to want to have if you do start getting into making antennas and messing with the antennas and building and all that, you're gonna need an analyzer. And I use the Nano VNA. And another thing you're gonna need is a dummy load. A dummy load is gonna tell, is gonna allow you to transmit a signal through your, through your feed line and determine if you have a problem with your feed line or with your antenna yourself itself. So definitely pick up on those two things that will help, help you greatly. There's a lot of reasons why you would want to put an antenna in your attic. Most of them are stealth. Uh, maybe you live in an HOA, they won't let you do something like that. Or maybe you just don't feel like putting one up, uh, you know, outside until you get it working. Or you just want to test it. Or maybe you want an antenna that you can keep inside that you can use during severe weather or something like that. But I used my attic antenna for, oh, several months and actually worked an entire DXCC that's 100 distinct foreign entities on mostly FT8 but I got them all confirmed but eventually I decided I wanted to get that puppy outside and that's when I put it right out this window right here so as you can see there's a little hook and what I would do is uh open the uh window there just a little bit and let enough uh, coax feed line out the window that I could hook the uh, un, -un uh, for the 49 to 1 infed half wave on that hook and then I'd run it uh, right up into that tree and out in the forest. I used a much bigger one too, a much bigger wire, 130 feet. And uh, that worked good, but I found uh, the RF was uh, all over that coax tail, that uh, coax... Uh, it was using the coax as a counterpoise and it was making my window unit go nuts. My thermostat would go up and down. So my next thought was to get the whole thing outside and that's when I moved it to right over here. At one point I had a 20 foot mast up right there that I had it hooked onto, but I didn't really think it was necessary. So I just kind of hooked it onto this garden trellis and it's been there ever since. I still have the one up in the attic and I still have this one. Both of them are backup antennas at this point compared to my doublet, but I keep them up just in case I need them. 
So, would I tell you to put up an attic antenna? I wouldn't tell you not to. Um, I would tell you that it's gonna have its drawbacks, it's gonna have its problems. It's not a perfect antenna, but sometimes it's your only solution. Sometimes it's your only option. So, if you have to put up an attic antenna, do it. Put whatever antenna up you can. If it's an attic antenna, so be it. And if your reservation of putting one outside is weather or your homeowners association or anything like that, man, it's completely understandable. And you're gonna have some limitations using an attic antenna, but it will work. But, you know, I'm not an expert. I, I'm still fairly new to this and I, I think my, the best thing that I have going for me is that uh, I'm persistent. I've been, been willing to do things the wrong way enough times until I pull out my hair and then somebody tells me how to do it the right way. And I think that I've learned more from that than just about anything else. And I think that has been one of the most enjoyable parts about amateur radio to me is the learning experience. Even just as much as the interaction experience, the learning experience, and just putting it all together and making it work. When it, when it works, it's a triumph. When it, when, it finally, when it finally connects or when your antenna finally uh, gets in the right place or any of these little tiny victories that you can have, when you finally get one, it's a triumph and then you build on that and you just keep building and building and building and before before long you've you've, you've done a couple things and yeah it feels pretty good <laughs>